Welcome everybody. Good day to you, wherever you are from. I'm Ivy. Thank you very much, Jiwei IQI, to invite me to this ADAPT International Conventions 2022. Who am I? Just give you a little bit of introductions before I start talking about the topic. Now, I started as a programmer, and then uh, after a while, I move on to other industry, talking about doing about like management, marketing. And when I start to get to know about blockchain, I am uh, get intrigued by it. And just like most of the people, I started with investing in cryptocurrency and mining in whatever most people are doing. Then I got really intrigued by the technology which is the blockchain. And I want to know more about it and get a job in it. And the rest is history. And I have been doing training, consultancy about blockchain ever since 2018 until now. I'm Ivy, now currently a blockchain educator, a web tree enthusiast, and the Vice President of Women in Blockchain Asia. If you want to get to know more about me, welcome to scan the QR code and get in touch with me. Now, Web3, it has been a buzzword that going here and there and everybody is talking about it. Um, do you have this kind of experience that when you sometimes get a call, and you do not know what's the number. And when you answer the call, and then the person at the other side would say to you, hello, it's Ivy. I am so and so and calling from web uh, company ABC. And I'm calling you today is to share with you this product that we have. Um, what would you do normally? To be very frank, normally I would just say, um, no, thank you, and I hang up. Now, if one day Web3 call you, hi, Ivy, I'm calling from Web3, and now I would like to share with you what is uh, the product we can offer. What would you say? Of course, when we hear about this, right, if somewhere, somehow, the terms or the product they mention pick your interest, you would want to know more what exactly they are selling, right? So before we answer to the call and say yes to Web3, it makes sense for us to understand what exactly is Web3, right? So Web3, before we come to Web3, there should be a Web1 and Web2. Let's just take a little bit of time and digging a little bit about what actually is is Web1, Web2, and Web3. Now, um, let's roll back our time to about 20, 30 years back when we start to have the web. What we have is basically a static web. You go on to the URL, what do you get there? You just read, there's no interactions. You can only read, you only can only consume the information. When even there is time, there is certain sites that need your membership to view it. You will key in your username, you sign up, you key in your username, you have your password, and the username and password is usually unique to that website. And come Web2, and that is the time where you can not only read whatever on the website, you can also interact with the website. You can contribute to it. For example, Facebook. You're not only reading from your peers, but you also post your information or your sharings on the Facebook. And you can even use your Facebook account to sign on to the another site. Now that is the web too. And when it's come to web too, Company like Google, Facebook, Twitter, hold a lot of your information. When you sign up, you give them their private 
the you give them your private information, for example, like your name, your address, your email address, just to verify that you are the person in case the password's lost, they'll be able to get it back. Now, because of this, this company hold a lot of your information, even know you better than yourself because they record what you did on their website and they form a habit about you, some knowledge about you. Now, because of this, the data have been become very centralized. When the web, when during the web one, because the information is not shared within the website, it's quite decentralized, and web three is very, web two is very uh, very centralized, and company is making money out of the data, so people think that how we can protect protect our information more, and that's where the web three come in, where you can use. A uh, lock on to a web application by just using a wallet. Now, if you have experience in using a cryptocurrency, you would come across a wallet. So, a wallet is like an identity of yourself. You can use this wallet to sign up to certain web applications, which allowed you to do that. And with this information, the wallet, you do not need to provide your personal data. And whatever information you own that is related to this wallet belongs to you, but not to the company. So with this uh, revolution, it gives a totally different idea to what Web3 can do and how it can help the user to protect their information, their identity, and their privacy. Now, when you talk, uh, you, you may ask Ivy, when you talk about the Web3, you talk about cryptocurrency and you talk about your experience in blockchain, is Web3 referred to? Blockchain. Um, yes, I know. Generally, blockchain is the technology that is supporting Web3. Now, how exactly it is? You can think about uh, some of your app uh, the appliances in your kitchen that you're using. For example, uh, you may use you might have a smarter fridge that know what kind of stocks that you have inside your fridge and if it's like you no know, low in any of this supply it will order it for you pay for it and have it delivered to your home now this kind of example of the applications might involve blockchain where it pay with cryptocurrency for example but it also involves other technology like IoT and such. And blockchain is only part of it. So a web tree generally is something, uh, applications that with the element of blockchain in it, but it also incorporates other technology. And the good example of the web tree applications would be, of course, cryptocurrency, non-fungible tokens, digital id and a lot of DeFi product that we are hearing nowadays like sticky and one more thing that is the buzzword nowadays DAO, decentralized autonomous organizations where people who are in the ecosystem will be able to vote for any decisions that the organization is to make so if we look at it into a more detailed manner, in Web3, we are talking about decentralized applications. Uh, for example, the wallet that we are using and an NFT platform that you use to buy the NFT, where in all this, you sign in with your wallet, which is the unique identity that you have. And whatever thing that inside the wallet, you have the ownership over it 
and the content that you send to the blockchain won't be able to be censored by any organizations. Take for example, if one day your account is being censored by Facebook, then all the data could be gone. Or if they change their privacy uh, rules and regulations, certain information you might not be able to retrieve anymore. But anything on the blockchain, it will be immutable. And we're talking about self-governing in Web3 applications and where there is no central authority to govern something everybody who own a stake into any of the decentralized autonomous organizations will be able to make a decisions would have a chance and the power to make the decisions so looking at all this uh, attributes of the web tree and you look at the blockchain again and the blockchain would be able to provide a technology that is decentralized, that is transparent for everybody to scrutinize data. It'd be able to tokenize our assets. It is immutable and there is no intermediary involved. It is the perfect technology to support this kind of Web3 applications. So if when Web3 call and you just say, ah, nah, I'm not going to do anything or have my business have anything to do about this Web3, is that a missed opportunity for me? Well, before we answer that, let's look at some data. Now, according to this data that is about a year ago, that's not too long ago, by block data. 81 out of the 100 public companies that is by the cap uh, market capitalizations are either using blockchain technology or looking into blockchain technology. The most used one is Fabric and then Ethereum and many other blockchain as well. You might see some of the popular or famous brand name here. Now, not all of this company are already using the blockchain. Some of them are in the research stage. Some is in the pilot stage. Some is in development. And some is already in productions. And that is quite a number of them. Now you might say, wow, they are the big corporations. I'm not. Should I even consider that? And if I'm using and um, getting into this Web3 realm, does it mean that I'm on the way to the bright future? Or Web3 is actually the solutions that is looking for problem. It's just like many of those uh, marketing calls that you get, they already have the problem. They are looking for clients, they're looking for customers. Well, I think for any business, it doesn't matter that like you are the big corporations or you are SME or you even just a startup. What we need to see or what we need to consider before we adopt any solutions, we need to look at our needs and wants. And there are universal needs and wants for every business, and that is to increase the profit and lower the cost. Now, how Web3 would be able to help you? Now, with the technology, the blockchain technology, generally, there's a few thing, no matter uh, what kind of problem that like you might be facing now, whether it's the cost issue, whether it's your manpower issue, or maybe it's a supply chain issue that you are uh, facing, or you are facing the authentications issue, that is generally would be 
able to solve by these four solutions that the blockchains or the Web3 applications will be able to solve for you. It usually will be fall under this category. Let me just give you an example that uh, I'm listing it here, tokenization, tracking, identity, and authentication. Take for example, if you are a property developer and how you can use this uh, Web3 technology to help with the distributions or the selling of your product or uh, your property. Now you can tokenize your property, even fractionize it because of the tokenizations. And because of that, it makes the tracking and transfer of ownership easier. Now, even uh, because everybody would log into your web applications or web three applications using the wallet, their identity will be private to them. I mean, there is some way of KYC can be implemented and that is up to the applications that you would like to uh, employ. And because of the unique ID they have, it will be able to authenticate at which stage of the uh, process is in. And all this will be easy access for everybody to have a look while still maintain a level of privacy. Now, you do not have to use all these solutions provided by the blockchain or the Web3 applications because but there's no one size fits all for the Web3 applications here. But the good news is also is it's very and highly customizable to tailor to the issue that you want to solve or the target that you want to achieve. So the first thing you need to do is understand what you need and what you want. And well, instead of waiting for Web3 to call you, it's time for you to call the Web3 and implement what is going to help you to bring your business to the next level. And I'm Ivy Fong, and this is what I would like to share with you today answering the Web3 call. Thank you very much.